Hey Scorpio, this is Michael with your October 2022 reading. I do hope that this finds you well. I want to wish all of you a happy birthday who have a birthday coming up this October for all of my Scorpio sun folks out there. You are also more than welcome to watch this if you have a Scorpio moon rising or maybe you're cross watching or maybe you just feel drawn to this video. It doesn't really matter. Uh, these messages are general, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind for somebody else. I will be talking about the astrology a little bit as we shuffle the cards for you. We are going to be in your season towards the end of this month, and probably the most significant thing of October is actually happening in your sign, Scorpio. We have a full or new moon solar eclipse happening on the 25th. And this is actually conjunct the planet Venus as well. So Venus is right on top of this eclipse. Um, we also have a lot of these planets uh, going retrograde or stationing direct. We have Mercury, Pluto, Saturn all going direct this month. And we have Mars going direct at the end of this month. So there's a lot of shifting of gears. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about with retrogrades, it's basically when the planets appear to be moving backwards and the focus becomes more internal. With the planets going direct, there are a lot of things coming ahead. We may feel like we are playing catch up this month or finally integrating some things that we have been reflecting on. Um, and it's interesting. I feel like a lot of you have been really trying to figure out what makes you happy. And this might even be pertaining to work or to your career with the three of pentacles. I do feel like some of you have also needed to take some time for yourself, maybe removing yourself from toxic workplace energy or even friendships that, you know, maybe there's a little bit too much gossip. I'm just kind of getting that energy actually and, and kind of reflecting more on how you want to feel and, and how you want your energy to flow. Um, I, I am looking at the hermit at the bottom of the deck here as well. And again, kind of thinking of this astrology, this actually makes quite a deal of sense to me because we have um, a lot of focus in your psyche, in your subconscious, being in Libra season. This represents your kind of hidden self, your inner self, uh, maybe even the parts of yourself that you aren't always super aware of. So I, I feel like you are reflecting a lot this month, but it, it doesn't feel heavy actually. It feels very much like, how do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to spend my time with? We actually do have the Three of Cups here as well, which can indicate friendships or social gatherings or celebrations, um, which is kind of interesting. Some of you are really going to be celebrating a birthday this year. I, I, I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, and I think with the new moon eclipse that we have in your sign, this really could be like your debut this month. Um, you really could be coming out of your shell or, or stepping forward in a very prominent way, taking some sort of stage. Um, I just feel like there's good news. And it could be revolved around something that you are working on collectively with other people. Um, or you are just celebrating it with other people. I'm really getting celebrations and I think it's interesting that we have Pluto, one of your ruling planets going direct this month. Pluto has been retrograde since April, I want to say. Um, and Pluto is going direct in Capricorn, which is communication, you sharing yourself. And there's a lot of activation between Capricorn, Aries, and Libra this month, just with where the planets are and where the, the moon, the full moon in Aries will be. Yeah, I, I feel like around this full moon in Aries on the 9th of October, this could really be something where your hard work is coming ahead. You're, you're reaping your rewards, so to speak. Um, we have the Page of Wands, which just feels very victorious. Like you've made something happen. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of excitement. Um, you're getting back in touch with this creativity. You may even be getting in touch with your inner child. 
Wow, we have the world. <laughs> there is like just doors, so many doors opening for you this month, Scorpio. And I, I do think this has to do with the eclipse in your sign. Now, I do want to warn you, eclipses are not light energy. They can actually be quite disruptive with the changes that they bring. But sometimes that disruption can actually be a welcome change as well, especially if we've been in a situation where things haven't been going well or there's just been very challenging or we've been in a hard period. Eclipses can really shake us into something new. And so even though the energy might feel a little turbulent at times, overall, the, the cards are very positive for you this month, Scorpio. And I'm feeling like you're also figuring out who it is who supports the real you. That's something that's coming up quite a bit. Uh, I am seeing the fool at the bottom of the deck here as well. We are using the modern love tarot, by the way. Um... I feel like there's just a new cycle. There's a whole new beginning for you. And it's interesting that this eclipse on the 25th is happening so early on in your sign. It's at two degrees. So it's still very young energy. It's very new and vital energy. Um, I just feel so much relief. I think with Saturn going direct in Aquarius on October 23rd. We're almost done with this cycle of challenges and, and strife that we began in March and April of 2020. And for you specifically, Scorpio, this is talking about your roots, who you are deep down where you belong. And it feels like there's just this emotional weight that is being lifted. And that, that could be part of this inner child work as well. We have a two of cups here. Very interesting. Um, some of you could be connecting with a romantic partner or interest um, that almost feels like kind of a trajectory you are on. And that could even be something that happens in November, kind of later on in your season when we have a lunar eclipse in Taurus. There could be some really big changes with relationships that are happening. Um, It just feels very, oh, you know what this is? Jupiter is entering back into Pisces. And this could be really bringing a lot of fun and joy back into your life. This could also be you putting yourself out there and maybe meeting new people. And there could even be a relationship that develops if you are single. Um, or if you are in a relationship, you could almost be getting back to the sweet spark between you and someone else, especially if something's been really complicated or there's just been a lot of focus on work and getting jobs done. Um, it's like you're just enjoying the relationship. You're coming back into that. There's this new level, this new world you are going into. There's just so many doors that are opening up for you and it feels like it's been a long thing coming for you, Scorpio. I feel like the readings I've done for you have really been kind of heavy for a while. Um, and it feels like there's just something that is so profoundly shifting. And I think with Aquarius going into Pisces, or I'm sorry, with Saturn going into Pisces, leaving Aquarius... There are new commitments, there's new things that are forming for you in your love life and also creativity and just more fun. You're taking your enjoyment and pleasure more seriously. That's something that's going to be happening in 2023 because it's like you have realized the worth of just doing things for the sake of how they make you feel, how they make you feel good. I want to pull an animal card for you as well, Scorpio. 
We do have the raccoon. We have raccoon and tarantula. Interesting energy. I know when raccoon shows up, there's almost this creative or professional identity crisis that can come up with this card. And now kind of going a little bit deeper, I wonder how you're really feeling about this celebration, about this advancement that you may be experiencing this month. Because some of you may be feeling like you need to try new things. It's like, okay, I've achieved this. I have this under my belt. I've achieved all of these things. What do I do now? And there are these, there's just a world of possibilities for you. Creative potentials, ideas, new projects that you could be doing. I'm really feeling like there's something about writing that is coming up for this group too with raccoon and tarantula because raccoon, kind of working with the hands, I often think of writing or creating with the hands if it's, if, if it's another medium here. We do also have tarantula, which is kind of about shedding an old skin. And some of you have been successful with something, but it's almost like instead of being like, okay, I'm going to see where this goes. It's like, now what? What do I do now? And it's like you're shedding something with this eclipse in your sign at the end of this month where it's not even like you have a mask. I know we have the raccoon and there is kind of that mask energy, but that's not how I'm reading or feeling this energy. It's like there was something that was once very authentic to who you are that no longer feels that way. And to be, to be honest with this group, I don't feel like you're going to hold on to that. You're ready to transform. You're ready to change. You're ready to try something new. And there's just a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of doors here. And even looking at the eight legs of the tarantula, I feel like there are a lot of things, a lot of different ways to move forward. And this is also an ambush predator as well. Tarantula is about going after what you want, even if you have to be a little, with the raccoon, maybe a little sneaky about something. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, yeah, if you are thinking about changing a job or, or changing things up, maybe keep it to yourself actually right now. You know? You don't have to tell everyone what you're working on or, or the direction you're going in. There might be some deterrent that there was something about telling or, or working with the right people that came up earlier. Um, really trust your intuition on that. But I feel like there's just something you're celebrating. And it feels like it's, it's opening doors for you. And we have the hummingbird going after this sweetness, just a very high vibrational energy. And going to the things that nourish you. And, and that's very much how I was feeling at the start of this month when I, I first began this reading. It was a lot of you figuring out, how do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to spend my time with? Because I'm going to be honest, I, I do feel like there are kind of shifts in your, your friend circles right now. And you might be pulling away from one group and, and that the drama of that group and spending your time on things that are more nourishing and more replenishing to you. And you're really coming into your own energy as well. And honestly, Scorpio, I kind of feel like you're having a glow up as well. You are shedding some things. You are letting go of things. Um, and you just have this light to you. You're getting back in touch with this light and it's more of a feeling than anything else. A lot of the time when people talk about gloves, we, we see like the before and after photos, we make it very physical, but the truth is it, it's so much more than a physical transformation. Although some of you, I, I actually do feel like you are quite literally physically transforming by the end of this month. Um, you're feeling yourself. 
you, you really feel like yourself again. And you, you have this magic. You have something very pure that you're connecting with. I'm going to pull from the Starseed Oracle now and see what other messages that we have for you. Interesting. So the card that I pulled is you got the love. Hadarian energy, codependency and boundaries. So there is something with boundaries. There is something about being selective with the people you are sharing your energy and time with. And I do want to kind of just say this message. It's been coming out of my mouth a lot lately. Um, so I'm sorry if you've heard this in another reading or you're watching this from an, another video. But there is a difference between closeness and having no boundaries. And in fact, boundaries help us be closer. They help us be more intimate with people. And I think you're learning that, you're feeling that, you understand that. I, I feel like I said that just now and a lot of you are like, yup. I completely understand what that means because I feel like you are now in a cycle where you are very much in your own energy or you were just about to burgeon into this cycle. And you know that in order to have real relationships, you have to have yourself too. So let's read this. Let's break this down a little more. Where is it? You got the love. I'm thinking of the Florence and the Machine song, um, You Got the Love. It keeps popping in my head. Um, where is it? I'm sorry, Mercury is still retrograde, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself a lot or just having a hard time expressing myself. I actually feel a lot clearer and Mercury will be going direct on October 2nd, but my goodness, the past few weeks have just been crazy. Um, it seems like there's just been a lot of people who have been overextended and overbooked and working on so many different things. Um, and if you do connect with that, it looks like your work is going to be paying off and now you're kind of like, okay, I'm done with that. I, I need something new. I need something different. Um, Okay, here we go. The Hadarians are believed to be beacons of pure love, divine, unconditional love, who see love in all people and situations. As a result, they can find it hard to have boundaried, interdependent, healthy relationships because they've only seen the unconditional nature of those they mate. The lovers of the cosmos, they dive in fast, they're here to learn how to love while in the separate body, to learn to love self first, and then establish healthy relationships with others, to remember that the love they seek is already within them, that they truly do have all the love on their own. The message of this card is to review the ways you may need to establish healthier boundaries. Perhaps you're in a codependent relationship in which you may be losing your sense of self, it's common for starseeds to dive into, rela into relationships deeply, particularly with those who feel safe and familiar at a soul level. Perhaps you're in a relationship in which you give more than you receive, or perhaps there's a certain volatility to it and you're always unsure about where you stand. This card is assigned to do a relationship review and see what energetic agreements you've made, consciously or unconsciously, to acknowledge if there are relationships in which you feel anxious or powerless, in which you don't feel like it's safe to relax or just be yourself. To assess if there are any places of inadequacy that you've used a relationship to soothe and cover up. Do you lose yourself in relationships? If so, how? How can you develop a deeper love for yourself? And this feels really important to me because, again, we're talking about relationships. Kind of feels a little bit more like next month's reading, to be honest. Um, th that could be more of a focus during that time where we have a lot coming up about new relationships or deepening relationships. And honestly, with, with Uranus in Taurus and the North Node in Taurus, a lot of the planets that are going to be moving through Scorpio, your sign, later this month and into November are, are going to be forming this 
kind of opposition, which creates room for growth and healing. So these are themes I think that will be coming in more later. That would be my guess. Um, but overall, I feel like you already have begun this path of having healthy and bounded relationships. And it's not even necessarily like you are just cutting people out of your life. Maybe you will have to do that, but it feels more like you're holding your own. And you're not just using distance or the silent treatment or withdrawing instead of just communicating and having boundaries. And we talked about communication because there's a lot of activation in your third house of communication in the sign of Scor or in the sign of Capricorn with Pluto going direct. So really communicate this month. Really state your boundaries and figure out what those are. Um, and, and I feel like there's also something that is shifting. And, and part of this shift is you are seeing yourself in a new way. And who you have present to other people or how you present to other people may no longer be an accurate represent, representation of how you feel about yourself. And so it's really important to be true to yourself this month as well, especially with this big, big eclipse that we have in your sign. But it, it, again, all of this feels really, really positive. Um, and those are all the messages I have for you this month, Scorpio. I do hope that this was helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. I do appreciate that. You're more than welcome to check out the videos for your moon or rising sign if you haven't done that already. All of my links are in the description box down below if you're looking for distance Reiki sessions or personal readings. Um, I do have 15-minute readings again, so if you need a quick answer or some quick advice, that's a great way to kind of start out. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, Scorpio, and have a happy and safe October.